Hello there friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech, my name is Alan. We recently did a video about how Luke Skywalker is wrong to force the green baby plastic squeeze tube of yogurt to make a choice between Din Djarin and the life of a Jedi. I read a lot of your comments as usual and I found some pretty interesting ideas. But more importantly, what I realized was that I disliked the tone I was using in that video when describing Luke's teaching abilities. Yes, the sequels turned Luke into a less than likable character, and unfortunately we, the fans, don't have $4 billion to buy Star Wars like Disney did 10 years ago. But perhaps we lionize Luke too much in our minds. He was sort of the perfect person for the situation he was in, but he wasn't an experienced Jedi during the Galactic Civil War. He wasn't even an experienced adult. When he left Tatooine, that was literally his first time off-world since he was a newborn. And while Luke had the right qualities and discipline and mindset to navigate the many difficult situations he faced, the only reason he was successful in defeating the Emperor was because of his connection to the Emperor's enforcer, Darth Vader, who also happened to be his dad. Otherwise, Luke's story would have ended in a pile of ashes on the second Death Star. And so instead of criticizing Luke's teachings, maybe we should take a look at what kind of knowledge did Luke gain from individuals like Obi-Wan Kenobi and Yoda in the first place. I mean, a student's failure is sort of the master's failure as well. So when Ben Kenobi meets Luke Skywalker in Episode 4, he sort of gives Luke the background information about the Jedi and the Force. It's sort of like he's explaining to Luke what Star Wars is actually about. Obi-Wan then explains the real purpose of the Jedi, which would have been lost on someone like Luke who grew up in the Imperial period. Obi-Wan tells Luke that the Jedi were warriors who maintained peace and justice in the Old Republic. He also introduces the concept of the light side and dark side of the Force, but instead of telling Luke that his father used to be a Jedi and then turn to the dark side, he just lies to him and tells him that Darth Vader killed his father. Which I guess is kind of true from a symbolic point of view, or perhaps from the Jedi's more rigid point of view on the Force. It's also possible that Obi-Wan Kenobi didn't want to tell Luke the truth that he failed to keep Anakin from going to the dark side and also delimb three of his appendages. It would probably shake Luke's confidence in Obi-Wan Kenobi uh, if he actually knew what he did to his father. But later on, Luke would see through the lie when Vader tells Luke that he is his father. This in turn teaches Luke an important lesson about being a Jedi Master. This is a position of power and knowledge, and the Jedi Master knows best, and so they can even lie to their apprentices if they believe there is just cause, and it will help the growth of the Padawan. Which is actually just a terrible lesson. Before we continue, a word from our sponsor for today's video, ownersaber.com. Today we have the Cypher Blade from them. This is a dueling saber. This means it's lighter, less complex. It's also less expensive, but it's a lot more robust and you're able to whack people with it and spar and have all sorts of fun. The Cypher Blade is very well balanced throughout and it doesn't sacrifice many of the same features that the higher end Xenopixel has, like customized color, sound effects, and different types of blade modes. Anyone who purchases the Cypher before February 15th will be entered into a free giveaway for a dueling saber of their choice. If this sounds like something you guys want to check out, go to ownersaber.com. We'll link the website down below in the description. They'll be giving you 20% off of all lightsabers. Plus, if you use my promo code MEOW, that's all caps, you can get an additional 10% off. Okay, thank you for your patience. Back to the video. So in our next scene, Obi-Wan Kenobi explains what the Force is to Luke. The Force? Now, the Force is what gives the Jedi his power. It's an energy field created by all living things. It surrounds us, it penetrates us, it binds the galaxy together. This is a pretty famous line. It's a famously vague line, but I guess it's okay for Force newbies. Plus, Luke would spend most of his time after the Galactic Civil War searching for ancient Jedi manuscripts and books that would fill in more details about the mystical Force. But the first time Luke really sees the Force in action is when Obi-Wan Kenobi tricks a bunch of stormtroopers, including one old clone, by using the Force Persuasion Technique, or Jedi Mind Trick. Obi-Wan Kenobi doesn't tell Luke that this trick should be used carefully. There's no suggestion of temperance or restrictions on when a Jedi can use this mysterious power. He does, however, remind Luke that... The Force can have a strong influence on the weak-minded. And so the lesson here is not about using restraint when applying this less-than-ethical you know, technique. It's all about targeting weak-minded individuals because they are more susceptible to the Force's power. It's not a great lesson. This behavior is borderline evil and the result of an archaic religious organization existing far too long without any checks and balances. When Obi-Wan Kenobi and Luke enter the Millennium Falcon for the first time, Luke begins training on their remote with the lightsaber. Obi-Wan Kenobi senses the destruction of Alderaan and Luke senses his distress. And it's here that Luke learns that a Jedi can actually sense massive losses of life across 
great distances. The forest, you see, doesn't just surround everything, it's also interconnected. It serves as a highway for information as well. Later on, as Luke develops his force powers more, he would establish a connection with his twin sister Leia through the force. Now, once Obi-Wan Kenobi recovers from the destruction of Alderaan, he continues to instruct Luke Skywalker. Remember, a Jedi can feel the force flowing through him. You mean he controls your actions? Partially but it also obeys your command. This is an interesting statement because Obi-Wan Kenobi is explaining to Luke that the Force is not only everywhere, it's also in our bodies, and when we are connected to the Force, we can use it to do things according to our will. I would argue this is wrong, actually. Uh, coercion of the Force is something that the Sith are generally known for doing. The Jedi, you know, their ultimate goal is to become one with the Force, as in their behaviors and actions are so in line with the Force that there is no difference between them and the cosmic Force all around them. At that point, a Jedi has reached ultimate enlightenment and becomes one with the Force and turns into a Force spirit. Now, Obi-Wan Kenobi proceeds to give Luke a helmet with a blast shield and tells him to use his instincts as this is key for developing a connection to the Force. Stretch out with your feelings. I think this is a pretty good idea because the Force clearly functions differently from your other senses and having your other senses active or focusing on like your vision and smell might actually prevent you from connecting to your Force naturally. Your eyes can deceive you, don't trust them. Now Luke manages to adjust his tactics and block a few lightsaber bolts. Obi-Wan Kenobi is pleased, but Han Solo kind of writes it off. I call it luck. In my experience, there's no such thing as luck. Han Solo is probably wrong here. Luke definitely is force sensitive and I'm sure he perceived those lightsaber bolts and intercepted them. But this line shows us one of the main problems with Obi-Wan Kenobi. It's his steadfast belief and devotion to the old Jedi Order and it's massive arrogance in thinking that they know how the universe works. When he says that there is no such thing as luck, Obi-Wan Kenobi is basically saying that everything happens for a reason and most likely that reason is driven by the force and one's destiny and the Jedi understand exactly how all that works. This is really important for Obi-Wan Kenobi to believe because he spent the second half of his life dedicated to this idea that Luke might be the key to rekindling the Jedi Order and destroying the Empire. It's not easy to wait on a desert planet by yourself for so long. One tends to lose their mind. Now, I roll my eyes when faced with prophecies and predictions on the future. But Obi-Wan Kenobi practices what he preaches. When an opportunity arises for him to sacrifice his life so that Luke and company can escape, Obi-Wan Kenobi decides to embrace his own perceived destiny, a death at the hands of his former apprentice Anakin Skywalker. And right before he's struck down, Obi-Wan Kenobi says the following. You can't win, Darth. If you strike me down, I shall become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. <laughs> Luke might not have heard what Obi-Wan Kenobi said, but it foreshadows what's going to happen to Obi-Wan, he will turn into a Force ghost. This would completely change Luke's view of the world and the afterlife. Knowing that this will eventually be his own destiny should he choose to cultivate that power, this makes one's choices in life a lot easier to make. Luke will be willing to sacrifice his own life one day for another Jedi because he knows that death is no longer the end. Now, Luke's more formal training begins on Dagobah with former Grandmaster Jedi Yoda. Now, at first, Yoda is unsure of Anakin's son. He has a discussion with Ghost Kenobi through the Force. I cannot teach him. The boy has no patience. He will learn patience. Hmm. <clears throat> Much anger in him. Like his father. It's here that Luke begins to learn the pitfalls of being a Jedi. Impatience, anger, and all sorts of emotions that can turn a Jedi into a dark side force user. All his life as he looked away to the future, to the horizon, never his mind on where he was, hmm? what he was doing. Hmm. Adventure. <laughs> Excitement. <laughs> Jedi craves not these things. Okay, there's a lot to unpack here. First, Yoda claims that Luke is focused on the future and looking for excitement and adventure. Clearly, the young Skywalker likes the idea of being a Jedi and sees it as a cool thing, as most of us would if we were in his shoes. But in order to truly become a Jedi, one must be serious and more mature, and most importantly, focused on the present and what is in front of him, which of course is a long road to practice hardship and discipline. All the things that Luke wishes for, like adventure and excitement, will follow once he becomes an actual Jedi, but by the time he's ready for those moments, he should no longer care about these childish kind of things. Yoda also claims that Luke is too old. Although they don't go into specifics, the Jedi Order usually refuse to train older Jedi. 
especially during their last few hundred years of existence. Anakin Skywalker was around 10 years old when he was accepted by the Jedi Order. Initially, most of the High Council were against this because they believed that older younglings already had a shaped worldview and attachment to family and friends. They were much harder to mold. I wonder if Luke considered this before training individuals like Kylo Ren and Gogurt. Now, one of the major problems with the Jedi in their last few hundred years of existence was their complete lack of exposure to the dark side. There was no training, no defense against the dark arts classes. Even books about the dark side were kept in a special off-limit area in the archives. This was kind of the result of the Sith disappearing for almost a thousand years. But when they reappeared, many Jedi were completely unprepared to face the challenges they had created. Yoda actually seeks the changes. After the Clone Wars, he settles on Dagobah, near a Force Nexus, which is contained inside of a small limestone cave that was flowing with the dark side. Such places can corrupt the young Jedi very easily, but Yoda saw this as a great opportunity to challenge himself by enveloping himself in the dark side and resisting its temptations. He would also share this experience with many other Jedi who came to visit him, like Starkiller. With Yoda at the helm, though, this was sort of more like a dark side light experience that was done with proper supervision from a trained Jedi therapist. And it's basically the Star Wars version of a psilocybin clinic, I guess. It's here that Luke would face his darkest fears. When Luke enters the cave, he finds himself looking at his own face inside of Darth Vader's helmet. He is afraid of following his father's footsteps and turning to the dark side. Ultimately, this would haunt Luke to his dying day. As much as he would go on to prove himself in future conflicts with the Empire, Luke would still question his own alignment to the dark side. Later on, Luke has visions of his friends on Bespin in trouble. Yoda explains that Luke is having a forced vision in that... Difficult to see. Always in motion is the future. Luke, of course, wants to help his friends, but Yoda warns him of the grave consequences of his actions here, which kind of mirrors the choice Luke gives Gogurt a bit. Either stay and become a Jedi or leave and join your friend the Mandalorian. Luke is warned by not only Yoda to not leave, he's also warned by Ben Kenobi. Both old Jedi believe all his training will be wasted if Luke leaves before he's finished his training. It's at this point we realize that Ben Kenobi and Yoda are both consumed with fear that Luke is not ready to face Vader. They are okay with Luke sacrificing his friends, and this is where the Jedi were always wrong. This is also where Luke kind of ends his main training from these two Jedi. You see, this is where Luke begins following his own instincts instead of listening to the Jedi. No more training do you require. Already know you. That which you need. I mean, Ben Kenobi and Yoda are quite wise individuals, but they both represent the old ancient Jedi concept of not having attachments to friends and family, which, as we all know, is extremely important for the development of a normal and sane human being. And for Luke to kind of make this instinctual choice is extremely important. This is why a lot of people are disappointed, by the way, uh, of the sequels, because he kind of makes the wrong choice with Kylo Ren later on in his life, and that leads to his downfall. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button down below so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome content. As usual, thanks for joining us today. If you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.